So in a previous video I showed you this AeroSky quad build that I'm helping Steve with and one thing that he wanted to do was replace the multi Wii with this KK2 and unfortunately this KK2 appears to be defective at least the, from a hardware standpoint this button 4 doesn't work and you guys have given me some great suggestions on things to try. I've tried different ESC's I've tried uh, different versions of the firmware. This is version 1.6, but I've tried 1.2 all the way up. And so uh, my favorite, I think, was a master reset. And I'd read about this before, and it's almost like it's a joke, but uh, it's a button sequence where one of the sequences is pressing, I think, button 3 36 times. But there were a few suggestions to try what's known as the no LCD firmware so it's a, a version of the firmware that you can use to configure your KK uh, without the LCD and so Steve has told me he's fine with the multi Wii which I think is a great uh, flight controller but what I want to do is at least give this one last try and this video is going to talk through using the no LCD firmware and doing configuration of this KK2 and I've never done this before so uh, this will be my first go at it and I'll try to do my best to document the process but starting off you'll notice that I have the programmer connected and we'll load the no LCD version of the firmware so our programmer is connected and we'll go ahead and launch the KK configuration tool I'll put the links in the description below but this is the RC groups post that talks you through uh, the no LCD version 1.6 firmware you see down here is the download and we'll get the flash tool is loaded we leave all the defaults now you might be most familiar with selecting a uh, pre-configured firmware but we're going to actually grab the one from the download and if you unzip it you'll see a, a hex file with this name and we're going to double click it and you can see it's ready to load so we'll click this flash button okay and now you can see that we've flashed with the no LCD firmware with the no LCD firmware loaded you'll see the LED blinking and unfortunately our button 4 still doesn't work so now we'll run the command line utility Now there's a good chance when you hook up your KK2 with a USB ASP programmer that you're not going to have the right drivers. So uh, we'll just give that a test and we'll go to the no LCD program. And by default, it'll run with USB ASP programmer. So we'll go ahead and run that command. Please connect the KK2 board. So that's already done. Hit enter and then you'll see this error message so what we'll do now is if you notice the URL the link above you can see that we can download the drivers which I've already done and I've unzipped them and what you want to do is install the drivers for that device so to do that I'll go to devices and printers and you'll see that my USB uh, ASP device has a little warning icon next to it and we'll go to properties we're going to update the driver and we're going to browse for the driver locally and we're going to do the lib USB with the underscore zero folder hit OK next install this software driver anyway okay so now it says this device is working properly so let's go back to our command prompt We'll go to no LCD, hit enter, hit enter again, and now you can see that we're connected and reading data from our KK2 board. Okay, now that we've connected and have read the parameters, we're going to hit the enter key, and then you'll notice a menu, which is fairly similar to what you see in the LCD display. So sometimes it's you take for granted how useful the LCD display is but 
uh, this is what, what we're dealing with. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is, uh, as I would normally do on my screen, is go to the motor layout. So we're going to just hit K to show the motor layout. And you can see that it has us in a plus configuration. So I'm going to hit B to go back. And then L to load motor layout. And I'm going to select uh, G for a quadcopter X. Okay, so I hit G. And that looks good. And I'm going to hit B to go back. And just to confirm that, I'm going to hit K again. And you can see that is our motor layout with one, two, three, and four. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and hooked up the receiver inputs, the ESC motor outputs. Now, the interesting thing is that the no LCD calibration routine still says we need to do the, the one and four button. So I'm going to go ahead and go through that process right now. And for this, I've disconnected the programmer. So what we'll do is, in the previous video, I got the Walkera transmitter uh, configured. And so I'm going to throttle up. And I'll give power to the transmitter, power to the KK while I hold down buttons 4. And, you know, surprisingly enough, button 4 does work when pr pressed with button 1. Turn on the transmitter, give power to the board, and then quickly push 1 and 4 down. So you see throttle pass through, and then bring it down. And now our ESCs are calibrated. So I'll let off the button one and four. Okay, so we're back with the no LCD utility. I have the transmitter turned on, and the transmitter and receiver are binded together, and we're gonna do a receiver test hit B and this will tell us our, our trim settings which look pretty good you know rudder trims one unit off but I'm not gonna lose sleep over that so what I'll do next is I'm actually going to attach the props and we're gonna see if we can get this thing to hover just real low and then we'll come back and do our uh, PI gains to see if we can get that dialed in Okay, so we have KK mounted with just some zeal under each, each corner, and props are on. And these are APC's multi-rotor props that I've recently been flying with. It's a good kind of rigid prop, you know, not too expensive. You can see, I didn't realize until lately, more recently, that they have a multi-rotor prop, which is great. And they're only about three bucks a piece. Okay, so we're in safe mode. Let's just see if we can arm down to the right. Yep, we're armed. Okay, so I'm going to disarm. And let's go ahead and see if I can get this thing in the air. Okay, so let's give this a try. Put the AeroSky quad a little bit away from me, just in case anything happens. So I've armed it. Let me give it a little throttle. Props look like they're all spinning in the right direction. Okay, so I'm going to give it some throttle and see if I can get this thing to hover. Now remember, we haven't touched the PI gain yet, so let's see what happens. You know, it's a little sketchy. Probably need to work on the gains, but I'm actually surprised able to even get this thing in the air. Right now I'm flying in manual mode. So I'll work on getting it so that we can fly in self-level mode. this video is running long I'm not going to uh, mess with PI gains right now but uh, in the I'll do a follow-up video that shows how to use the no LCD firmware to set the P&I gains and I think the best bet is just to use some gains that I previously recorded for this frame and plug those in there instead of having to tweak and then reload the program or it's just a lot of back and forth 
So that's kind of an overview of using that no LCD firmware. My first experience with it and like I said I'll play around with it some more and do a PI gain a video. I hope it was useful. You know I've been having a lot of problems with the hardware. Thankfully the no LCD firmware came through. If you have any questions or comments post them below and thanks for watching.